going on guys hit pause here to bring you a bit of a walkthrough on what I have created here I this is arguably one of my greatest accomplishments ever uh, I absolutely love this thing um, it is a Huey uh, helicopter here and it actually does fly which is nice so I just want to point out that this is extremely, extremely early. I've done kind of the bare minimum. You can see a spider over here just pulling away. Did I know? Let me get him dead. Okay, so obviously here's just the model, right? It's just sat here looking pretty. This material is not actually the correct material on here. I haven't done that yet. Um, all of the PBR values are completely wrong. This was brought in from a uh, from UDK basically, so uh, all of the textures and everything are set up for specular and gloss. So you get kind of some harsh uh, transitions between the metals and things like that. Uh, I am going to take this back into substance, and I'm going to um, take it and basically, you know, just. Uh, redo all of the uh, roughness and metallic on it so that it looks good. The diffuse color is going to stay as it is. I like it as is. It's got my little pinup rat girl on here. It's got a paw on her thigh. So when I enter this thing, it powers up. I can't do anything. can't do anything. You can see over there I'm reporting the amount of power. you got to get it to 35 before it can do anything. Then I can take off. And if I let go of everything, I come to a very slow descent on a hover. Uh, press W goes forward. I can pitch forward to move forward. Uh, a and D are my yaw. Okay, it's got a little bit of slowdown if I let go. Okay, a little bit of inertia. I can roll it, and I still yaw in world space, which I'm not sure about that yet. I can actually descend and crash. I don't have any sounds, obviously. I don't have any crashing or anything set up for that. This is, like I said, bare bones right now. This is just the beginning stages of getting this thing working. Uh, but if I wanted to like land up here or something, I can do that. And then let's say I wanted to land over here. Okay, it actually takes a little bit of skill to fly this thing. It gets kind of weird every once in a while where the pitch keeps him putting on its own for some weird reason, like it's doing it right now, you can see it's pitching by itself every time I hit a collision. So I think I need to fix that, and once I land on the ground, it's back to normal, so I gotta figure out what's going on there. Uh, but I can land here. Like I said, very early, um, I can turn while I'm on the ground here, and if I uh, actually, say, land down here and get out, it will power itself down back to default position okay and like I said right now it's very early I only have the one collision on it okay I can walk right through it uh, all the other collisions are going to be set up for when you're flying uh, whenever you hit something depending on how fast you were going and all that stuff it'll do damage to it I'm gonna put collisions on the tips of the rotors or probably actually along the entire length of the rotor probably one um, uh, cylinder, spherical thing, whatever you call it, capsule. I always want to say cylinder, that's why it always throws me off every time. But uh, And then that can collide with stuff, so if you hit the rotors against something, uh, obviously that's catastrophic, that should do mass damage. Uh, same thing with the tail rotors, if that hits something, that should do mass damage, so I'll put a collision there for that. Um, you know, shots in the engine and things like that will do more damage than just taking it in the side. Obviously I've got to have weapons that I need to get ready to use and all that stuff, so like I said, very early, none of that's all working. I just, just started this today. It took me a couple hours, uh, like two or three hours or something like that to get this thing working. So here's how it goes. Uh, oh, and the other cool thing is I can actually just spawn as it. So if I have a like a particular map where I want to say, hey, this is like a chopper only map, I can have all the players spawn as choppers, and you can see that one there. And I actually cannot eject from this version. I have it set up so that if you spawn as a chopper, you cannot eject. But that's also a variable that I can set to to make it so whether or not you can eject. But you got to be careful because if you don't, um, 
if you do spawn as it, then uh, what's going to happen is you need to make sure that you tell it what class you're going to return to the game as. Uh, whereas it's very easy when you actually, oops, when you actually start as your default on class, uh, it knows that I'm, hey, I'm, you know, I am my 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 character here, so I can store that easy. I, I know who got in and who got out, right? Uh, but like I said, when I uh, if if I spawn as the chopper, I uh, and I do want to be able to jump out as a rat or you know a, a person, however you want to do it, uh, you would need to actually. Um, you know, make sure that that gets all, all that gets stored and stuff. So you can, uh, you can hover around. I think it might be pretty fun. It goes sideways when you tilt to the side. Uh, if you tilt too far to the side, it will actually crash. Boom! That was a special thing that was actually kind of difficult to do. I need to tune it a little bit better, obviously, because like right now, sometimes. Uh, like if I pitch, I think that the the ratio of pitch forward to speed and drop is a little low. Uh, like I see how I'm coming down. I think I need to tune that so to figure out so I can pitch downwards a little bit better. Obviously, I don't have any cameras set up um, or anything like that. I just have have it basic right now. So how we do this is I actually have a vehicle class that I created now now what this does here is handles basically nothing but the possession and the initial management so first thing we do is we set the anim class or you know, the anim blueprint for the actual helicopter because the helicopter does in fact actually have a animation blueprint Rent, which I think is in the mesh and yeah, a blueprint there I need to move that but here's the animation blueprint and then there's the animation graph the rotors are actually controlled entirely through code there's no animation on them whatsoever uh, so they speed up and slow down based on some variables so which is you know pretty pretty easy stuff to do uh, let's see uh, give me one second okay so my base class, this is actually not the beginning of the show here. Okay, this is something I added later. But the first thing that happens is actually right here, uh, report to player. So we have a component here that is a spherical component that I have called the uh, trigger. Uh, this, yeah, I haven't renamed it, but this is just the capsule. But this is the trigger to enter the vehicle. So you got to be within this radius to enter the vehicle, right? So on overlap of that, we basically cast a character. We tell ourselves that we can be possessed, and we tell the character uh, this is the usable object. Vice versa on exit. Okay. Possessed off set the usable target here to nothing okay uh, I do have other types of usable objects such as switches and lights and doors and things like that so uh, it all falls under the usable object category so basically what happens is on my character uh, it's either an item a usable object which would be a light or a door or something or it's a vehicle so that's kind of the only two things he can basically use I may have another case in case there's like a say a mounted machine gun or something that you can or a mortar or something like that artillery gun or something AA gun or something that you can sit in but those would probably be classified as vehicles in the end anyway so excuse me I have like the worst uh, the worst cough right now excuse me okay so basically what happens is if it's a vehicle we run take possession on the vehicle okay we tell it who we are okay we tell it this is our owner character this is the owner controller so we do the standard stuff for there we send self as the owner character obviously but we need to get our controller here 
you don't want to say get player controller okay you want to just say get controller so that uh, like player two and three and four aren't gonna send you into the freaking helicopter right they can send themselves in there so we run take possession and then we actually run possess it's very important that this be the last thing that you do uh, the reason for that is because pretty much at the moment that this takes over anything after the fact isn't gonna get run here anymore because this character no longer exists like um, as a playable character so when I had these things reversed I couldn't take possession of the, of the vehicle and I, when I tried to throw a print screen out of here uh, it like didn't work so do do your actual possession last okay so in the R vehicle BP here which is like basically my master class I have this take possession uh, controller uh, this event here now none of this is set up for uh, networking yet. In fact, uh, I believe I actually have to redo the whole entire thing for networking because I'm doing something that is kind of a no-no on this one, but just to get it working and for demo purposes and so I can get videos of the game and stuff like that, I'm doing it this way for now. Uh, but basically, uh, I never actually used this. I didn't really give... I stored it anyway just in case I needed it. But uh, we just take that and we cast it to us. We set the owner character this is something that we can we just store that so that we can uh, respawn the player back when we e do eject from the vehicle okay um, I check whether or not the player is supposed to be visible because like I have like an open top Jeep and when he jumps in that I need him to be visible but in this case this Huey happens to have blacked out windows okay so you can't see him uh, and that's just because I never really got around to doing any kind of interior so I may do like a cockpit HUD or something when you actually uh, get inside of it and in that case I would need to make sure that I set my own mesh here to invisible so there's nothing stopping me from still doing a view inside of here and adding a cockpit mesh and all that stuff and controls and show my hands and all that fun stuff but um, from the outside you can't see it now this is like a closed attack chopper style it's gonna have it's it's got rockets here it, it's probably gonna have um, one of those swivel machine guns on the front which I actually have modeled uh, just don't have it uh, Im implemented yet and that could be something that the uh, passenger guy can control right so we take that control and like I said we set who we are so that we can we set who we were basically so we can dump him back out into the world we do hide the player model if you know we're supposed to and if not we run this power up function now the power up function is basically nothing now I'm tricking the system here um, I can override this function in my child blueprint but I couldn't seem to do it without giving it an output uh, so I gave it a fake output I just said is possessed right hey I'm possessed you know um, so just so I could basically trip the rift on that because what happens is this guy will fire that function but that function is actually being overwritten here to run this power down event okay and the power or power up or power down event so here's the power up function runs power up okay and the event graph I have that now this is very messy the event graph has power up and power down basically tied to the same thing and all I'm doing here is I'm um, feeding two variables I have a max rotor speed now this is simply for the animation okay but this engine power here is also to tell it whether or not I have power okay so my timeline is a very simple curve okay it's from it takes six seconds to power up the vehicle alright so this timeline would basically be how long it takes your vehicle to churn its stuff you know if this was a a really really heavy battle cruiser or something you might want to have this take like 10 15 seconds but in this case I felt six seconds felt pretty good and it seemed like a good spin up for the blades and all that stuff and like I always I always like to on these data tables here this isn't always the case you don't have to do this but I tend to like to use a zero to one scale uh, even in a sine wave I tend not to like going over that say because I like I want my rotor speed to be like 50 you know I want it to spin like 50 that fast well, I don't want to put 50 here because then my engine power, which I'm using just to say whether or not I have power, once that hits one, I do have power, right? So I can use it for multiple variables, basically. 
uh, almost like kind of like float booleans if that makes any sense you can basically say hey is it one okay then false if it, is it zero okay true or, or vice versa however you want to do it so that's how I'm doing the power up so that gets ran first okay now the cool thing is is that when I go to make another um, vehicle say like a Jeep or a different type of helicopter like an Apache or a Cobra or something like that all I, I all of this stuff is in the child blueprint every everything that I'm doing here is all in the child blueprint so I can I'll my my parent class will fire this function but my child class determines what the hell it's actually doing so I can re-implement these functions in all of my childs so the power up and power down gets called from the parent but is defined in the child so it's reverse of what you normally can do where you can you have to define it in the parent and you can call it from the child anytime you want so in order to do that like I said I tricked it by making it so that it just has a simple output power down is the same exact thing okay but like I said in my child I can now I can over I can re-implement this and it will override this stuff in fact I don't even believe that possessed or anything like that actually gets ran because here's an important note and this was actually screwing me up uh, on the vehicle blueprint here I have event begin play right and it calls these several things here by the way the game seemed to crash when I turned physics simulate on and off I don't know why so I took that out um, so I, I've defined it here in my parent class, event begin play, and I got this stuff, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. If I call event begin play from here, nothing in my parent will run. This will not run. Okay, I'm officially overriding it. Now, I don't know if there is a way to say, um, like, the way it used to be in UDK uh, action, uh, scripting, you know, Unreal Script, was that you can say uh, super dot begin play which would mean run my parent okay so I don't know if we have super here so it's kinda difficult I don't, I don't maybe somebody knows how it works but like I said if I run this and I just say hey print screen uh, this is gonna completely override this and none of this will play and essentially I'll never get any animations this stuff right here is only important to tell me whether or not I've spawned as the helicopter or if I've spawned as my player. Okay, If I have spawned as the helicopter, the player character is never going to exist to tell me to take possession. So all of this will never get ran. So anything I do here needs to get ran. For instance, the f power up function. Okay, I don't need to worry about high player model because no one never spawned. I don't have an owner, you know. I never had a character in the game, so I don't care about all of this stuff. The what I do care about is the power, uh, is the the um, the power up function. So the way I can test uh, to see whether or not I've spawned at it is to simply get a controller. Okay, basically get my own controller. Now the weird thing is, is that when I spawn this thing, I didn't think I had to do this right here. I thought that it would come back invalid if I didn't spawn as the chopper that it was just a blueprint that was sitting there that was a pawn but it did actually come out and have a controller so in order to tell it okay well it's not actually being controlled I went ahead and checked a cast on the one player uh, the one P player controller which is actually my controller to run my rat around okay which has nothing in it it's just there to exist uh, I did not mean to do that so like we said uh, if if we spawned as it I simply say can eject is false, but I do the same same essential thing here, and that's all. This is the most important thing here is that both of these run the function, which again is defined actually overwritten here. Okay, it's completely overwritten here to run this power up. So that out of the way, that's how we're taking control. Now eject is relatively simple. I just basically check can I eject? If so, yes, go ahead and run the eject. So. I get the exit point which is actually a component here it is this cube here exit point it's just a marker could have been a billboard could have been anything I just used a cube here so I could line it up okay oh I almost knocked over my drink get its transform zero out the pitch and roll so my character's not all flipped upside down if the chopper was flipped upside down when I got out and tell that owner character 
to be there. I unhide it, I reset collision, I detach it because on uh, take possession, uh, on, on the hide player model, I do actually attach to the actor. Uh, I attach the player to the chopper, so if I didn't hide the player, you would see that he would be standing wherever he was, uh, right next to the chopper at all times. Uh, again, if, uh, if you, you need to run more stuff if you're going to have him sit in the seat. You need to attach him to a socket that's the seat. You need to tell him what pose to play, or animation system to play, because you can still have him lean left and right every time you turn the steering wheel. You could have him turn the wheel, do all that crazy stuff, that fun stuff. But if you're going to do that, you definitely need to attach him. Okay, so it'll in fact just be basically a, a kind of a uh, just a, a an animated object. It won't it won't have anybody controlling it, but you you know he'll he'll still need to. Uh, probably swap uh, to an anim blueprint that reads all of the uh, vehicle controls to control his animation. Okay, and you can swap uh, anim blueprints on anything by doing the set anim instance class. Now that is an exposed variable here. Remember, I'm in my parent class, which doesn't. I, I do. I do have the Huey in here, but there's nothing stopping me from changing this to any other vehicle whatsoever in my child. Uh, I may have to. Um, add the ability to set the new mesh and stuff like that but uh, it's, I only got the one vehicle right now so I'm not worried about it but it's a, it's a minor thing to do that um, the on the vehicle itself under the defaults I do have the vehicle anim blueprint here uh, that I can choose from okay so I just dropped it down and found the Huey anim blueprint all right so after let's see that we've done all that so on eject, like I say, so we just put the player at the sp at the exit point, unhide him, collision. We detach him because remember I attached him in the beginning. We set him to cast shadows now, and the reason for I had to do that was because my character, son of a biatch, my character's three-player mesh is actually set to. cast a hidden shadow and the reason for that is so that if I spawn as myself I don't see my own three player mesh but I do see my own shadow okay get out of here so I see my own shadow but I don't see myself all right I don't see my legs or nothing like that and I, I I'm doing that on purpose right now for now but what happened is because that when I hide myself there was actually always a rat shadow right here on the side of the, the helicopter. So I had to basically shut that off on the hide player right here at the very end. I set cast shadow to false. Okay, so on the on the three player mesh uh, of the owner character, which would be the guy who got in. So when I eject, that's why I have to set the shadow back to on. Okay. Then I run the power down function and then I go ahead and repossess the rat, which will automatically unpossess the chopper. But I need to tell it to power down before I do that. Okay. So that's really everything that's in the actual parent class. Like I said, just handles possession, a couple of minor cleanup things in terms of visuals, like you know, hiding, turning off collisions on stuff like that. Right now I have set it this isn't complete yet right here because I need to make sure that if I don't hide the player model I still get rid of his collision which you may or may not want to do because maybe you want to be able to shoot him in the head while he's driving by um, but you do need to attach so if, if I set um, player visible to true right now I'm not going to actually end up doing any of this so the character is just going to stand there so I haven't handled yet what would happen if he's visible so now for the actual fun shit once we are in the chopper, we are now in here. Okay. So, like I said, I've already done the power up and the power down. I've already showed you guys how to do that. Just use the simple timeline. Drive the animation, okay, here because the rotor speeds. Let me show you the blueprint really quick for that. It's very simple. We transform modify bone. Top rotor. I make a rotation out of this variable top rotor spin. I do the same exact thing right after it with a tail rotor spin. Now I did have to trip 
the machine here again. I had to make a state. I couldn't just do it, but you can see that my state has nothing in it. I don't care. Uh, there's nothing going on there. Okay. So whenever you create a transform modified bone, uh, it will come in um, basically empty, and these will look blue. So as soon as you tie them to something white, it will automatically do your conversion from local to component and then component to local at the end. Uh, however, if you're doing blue to blue, it does you don't need a conversion or anything like that. The one thing the two there's two things you have to set here that's very important or it doesn't work. God, I didn't even see that. Uh, number one, the bone. Number two, you have to set the rotation mode because you'll notice that everything, translation mode, scale mode, all of that stuff comes in as ignore and it won't work until you set it to something. Now I'm using additive and component space. And again, uh, I'm using, I could have, I sh could have, should have, would have probably used the same variable here for yaw and here for pitch. Okay, because this, you know, this, this thing spins in the, in the yaw, the top rotor and the, the tail rotor spins in the pitch. Uh, if I drag these, basically, I can drag them, but they're going to stop. Now what ha the, now the way that I got them to keep spinning was in the event graph, and it's pretty simple. Basically, um, I was having issues uh, picking up a controller here. I was I incorrectly set my Anim blueprint up, but so I get the ro rotor speed. I take my top rotor spin, which is whatever the variable is at this moment, which at the beginning is zero. I add it to I add the rotor speed to it, and then I set it. I do the same exact thing here with the tail rotor, and I use the same variable. So I'm not even bothering swapping variables here. Okay, it's the same thing. Um, I just I could create a new one in the in the thing, but it depends if you you know how you how you really want to handle it. The only reason that I'm not even using the same variable here, I have top rotor and tail rotor, is just in case at some point like I want to say hey the tail rotor has been destroyed or has been knocked out so I, when I send the the helicopter into a spin into an uncontrollable spin uh, I want to say turn off the animation for this right so that would be something I could interject in here at any moment that I want and the reason that it, like I said the reason that it keeps spinning because we get it and then we add so right now it's at zero and say the rotor speeds at 50 so I say, okay, well, 0 plus 50 is 50 on this frame. The rotor speed is going to stay at 50. That's its speed. It's 50, 50, 50. So every time it's going to go 50, 100, 150. It's going to keep adding that to it. Okay, so I just set the variable there. And in the anim graph itself, uh, it's just set to this. So this, this value is going to keep going up and up and up. Okay, constantly, permanently up. As long as the as long as the speed here isn't zero so as soon as it's zero it's not adding anything more and these effectively stop okay and again the way that I'm driving the variable on the actual um, on the actual vehicle itself is through the timeline when I run power up so powered up basically let me get rid of this stuff so I don't break it uh, power up will play this timeline and the way timelines work they're not like montages where they get to the end and then they just kind of like disintegrate they just destroy themselves from memory it will actually play this timeline and it will sit here at the end so the value when it goes from 0 to 1 will just stay 1 until you tell it to do anything different um, which and, um, if you you can do a curve on an animation as long as the animations while the as long it'll exist as long as the animations playing that's the problem so if I said hey you know I have a power up animation because I actually do have a animation of this thing powering up right this was something I just did in max like a, a long ass time ago but the thing is is you can add a curve here and let's say I give that curve a value and that value is like you know rotor speed or something well rotor speed will start at zero as soon as it gets up here, it'll be whatever I tell it at the end of the curve, but as soon as this animation's done, rotor speed is just going to get wiped from memory. So it won't stay at that final value. So that's why I'm doing it this way, basically. Uh, with a curve here, because like I said, they'll hold their value. This timeline will just basically, it'll sit here, it'll be at zero. When you tell it to play, it'll sit here, then it goes back and forth. It can't go out and it can't lose data, basically. So that's why we run that. And again, engine power is simply an on-off. 
I want to make sure that this is spun all the way up and that this is at one because right here you can see that I'm actually lerping my rotor speed between zero and the rotor max speed and the rotor max speed for me is 35 okay so when this thing's at full power it's every frame the propeller is rotating 35 degrees which is really fast to the point where it's basically a nonsensical blur right of course it's not really blurring but that is where in the end something like this comes into play because I do have uh, I do have this that I'm going to be adding into the mix sooner or later as soon as it speeds up this will fade in over time this is something I just haven't done yet um, it's a kind of a detail so after we're powered up we now can receive inputs because I'm using this macro called has power macros are very handy very easy they're kind of sort of like a function but the one cool ass thing that they do have is the ability to set ex execute outputs um, so based on any kind of event that you want inside of this macro you can have it execute two different things it's kind of a, a very handy way uh, it's it's essentially a branch uh, the way I have it set up but now they can do anything but the way I have it set up here is a branch so instead of me saying engine power e you know nearly equal or equal one if it equals one go to a branch and then they'll have the branch come out true and false and have to set that up every single time or copy and paste it because uh, like I said if I want to say okay I can only do this if my engine power is one I gotta get this. I gotta check if it's one. Then I gotta run a branch, right? I got all this crap that I gotta deal with. It's not just all that bad. And then I got Then I can fire out true false, right? So what I done is just took that because I was gonna use it everywhere. I can't do anything if I don't have power. None of my inputs work. They all go nowhere with no power. Okay? And it'll it'll fire to no power if this isn't just about one. Okay, engine power again being driven by the timeline directly from the output. Remember this this value here is going from zero to one. That's exactly what I'm writing engine power as. Just want to beat that through uh, in case anybody's confused about timelines. Uh, and and again using it as a lerp for this. Okay, so we now are receiving. We're all in the thing. It's spun up, ready to go, right? So what I do is I check if I have any input for move forward okay um, so if it doesn't equal one which means I'm pressing or if it doesn't equal zero it means I'm pressing forward uh, I'm going to go ahead and f interp my power so what I have is two variables for this I have the main upward thrust which is the live variable and I have a max thrust which basically determines what I want it to be when I'm holding the button down. Now, by multiplying this by the input, when I'm not inputting, this is actually zero. Okay. Um, I wouldn't exactly need to do this, uh, this one, but I need if if I set this to zero, uh, I don't. My helicopter just loses all power. So I don't want it so that when I when I'm holding forward. Uh, that I'm flying around fine, but when I let it go, I drop like a stone because helicopters don't work like that. They actually hover. So when I let it go, I run a hover variable. And the hover power is pretty low, 15. Okay. The max thrust power is 300. Okay. Uh, th these are dialable right here, uh, very dialable, as are these two here so you can do whatever you want there and they both set it here and then we run apply thrust now apply thrust is kind of where the meat of the entire thing happens now I need everybody to excuse me for one second I apologize I have to let this ass wipe dog in Okay, apologize for that. These dogs are, are needy little shizers. Okay, so I am using physics velocity. Now, this, these two things combined here are why I 
don't necessarily recommend you guys use this method, but it is the, the theory is still pretty clean, and most of the math and stuff can still be used. But the problem is, is that on a network game, uh, physics just aren't reliable. I shouldn't be using this, but I'm doing it anyway because I kind of already headed down this path. To be honest with you, um, really, this should probably be an actual character, so it has a movement component that you can possess. Um, but, like I said, most of the math will stay the same. Instead of setting physics linear velocity, when I, when I finally do this the right way, which would be, you know, like I said, using a movement component, I would be setting an input vector. be the only real difference. So all of the math and everything, like I said, I can, I can copy over. So we want to apply thrust, and we're basically, this is our final result here. We want to set a physics linear velocity. This add impulse comes after the fact because this is what is going to drive the idea that if I tilt too far forward, I'm going to fall like a frickin' stone, right? Like if you tilt too far to the side in a helicopter, you, go, you don't fly to the side and maintain your height. <laughs> you drop like a rock because gravity is still there. And I actually have this variable here. Okay, so running down the chain here, we get the main upward thrust, which again is being driven by my hitting the W key. Okay, I basically what I want to do is I want to multiply that by my upward vector. Now I'm using the collision box as basically the vehicle. The mesh is just visual. Uh, that that collision box that I have is what I'm actually using. And if I take a look at the collision box, it's this box that's running along the ground right there. Okay, that's its ground collision point. Again, like I said, I'll be adding more collision objects to, de you know, that can determine the individual damage. But that's the floor baser right there, so that that's where I land on. And it probably would be wise for me to put one on one skid and one on the other, because right now, if I land it on the side of something, there's a chance it might teeter and it would look a little silly. But again, not that big of a deal. So I want to multiply it by the upward vector of the vehicle. This is kind of confusing. I might not be able to get this right. I do want to just hang this on the view here for a second so you guys can basically copy it. Um, and I'll just move it here. So you can pause it right there. And you should be able to get what's going on here. But I am going to do my best to explain it. OK, so what I want to do is I want to determine my forward thrust based on my pitch. So it's kind of a tricky thing. Uh, so forward thrust is somewhere on here. Forward thrust is set pretty low. It's set to 20. And what I do is I get the actor's rotation and I multiply it by his pitch. And that's going to give me a value that's going to go up and down based on how far I'm tilted, right? Now that's just, that's very rudimentary. It does happen to be backwards, so I reversed it by multiplying it by negative one. Okay. Then I multiply it by its forward vector, so that I can say, do this amount of power forwards in my forward vector. All right. Um, same thing using the collision box here. So this is how much forward thrust we have, which is uh, which again is you know, actor rotation multiplied by the forward thrust. I should probably include some math to get the upward thrust in here too, but it works pretty good. Um, and then, so this is our value there. So this is how much we're powering up. This is how much we're powering forward. Okay, and then we just add them together. So, because remember, this one's going to end up in the Z, essentially. Okay, it's up vector. It's not Z in world space, but it's Z in local space. This is going to end up, you know, positive X in local space. We just add these together, so we get X and Z. Why we don't have anything to. Now, here is where I am doing the tilt. Okay, so what I'm doing is from this upward vector. Now, when the, char when, the, when the character is facing is just standing on the ground, the upward vector z value is 1. When you're completely on your side, say you were like sleeping on your side, and your head's pointing you know, horizontal to the ground, that upward vector is in z, just in z, is 0. When you're upside down, the z up vector is negative 1. So what I do is I use that 
to lerp a value between negative 1 and 0. So when I'm pointing straight up, I have 0 here. Okay? I have a gravity modifier that is set to very high, but a reasonable number, right? 980 is 10 times actual real world gravity. Um, so I basically take that and multiply it by that. So when I'm pointing straight up, when I'm my output here is zero because I have a one alpha here, which remember, uh, uh, I, just, I don't know where it is. Uh, yeah, it's a hundred percent of B when alpha is one. Okay, so when this when I'm tilted on my side, I have negative one here. That's going to multiply by gravity. Okay, so it's negative 980. I just put that in the z vector and I throw this as an impulse. Okay, so if I'm tilted partially to the side, I'm going to be like, you know, negative 0.1 or 0.2 or something like that. So I'm going to be adding about, you know, you know, 150 or so units of negative z impulse here. Again, because I'm lerping to negative 1. So that's how I did the tilt too far. You your ass crashes mechanic it's all right here okay and I had to use an impulse here because uh, the thing about the set physics linear velocity is uh, I'm already driving my Z here okay I could have taken this and I tried adding it to the Z component here but everything's kinda got all effort uh, screwed up so I just decided okay I'm just gonna push him down you know uh, I couldn't do another set linear velocity because this set linear velocity is not something that's like add to okay uh, I don't know if there's an add linear velocity yeah so there's no like add to there's an add local rotation and world rotation but I don't know or there's actually add local transform so I could have probably done that instead but like I said I decided for an add, add impulse alright the next thing I do is just simple shit move right which is the A and the D keys just basically again always I'm checking do I have power because if I don't I don't want to be able to uh, fire any inputs nothing should be working um, I have a yaw speed and a max yaw speed so I basically have my live variable and my target variable here so I multiply max yaw speed by my axis value because if I'm not touching the key this should be zero so this should lerp to zero uh, this is tunable right here as is this but this is something that just should default to zero in the beginning um, and then we set it okay after we do our lerp we set it and then we basically make a rotation and what I did here was add actor world rotation so that because the thing was is if I was pitched forward and I hit D if I add actor local rotation I end up pointing up into the sky you gotta think of it as one of those spin around uh, freaking fest uh, like carnival rides where it just spins you around and then it tilts itself up you know what I'm saying so it's like at one point you're looking down at the ground and the next point you're looking up at the sky but you're all you're doing is rotating in your yaw in the one axis so that's why I did this okay which basically solved that problem whether or not it's a good control system I'm not entirely sure uh, so that's move right look up is basically the same thing as is turn well this is turn so this is holding left and right. This is wait, move right, turn. No, this is this is roll. This is roll, uh, which is the mouse. This is a mouse input. This is the like the D input, A and D here. Okay, so these are going to default to one and zero, uh, right? So the that's and, and unless you're using a controller like a a Xbox controller or something like that, uh, this is either going to be zero, it's going to be positive one, or it's going to be negative one if you're just using keys. Uh, but this will work perfectly fine if I'm using a controller because it'll just give me intermittent values in between those. I'd definitely be able to fly this chopper with a controller. Um, so input axis lookup, like I said, it's the exact same thing, it's just different variables. And I'm firing it to a different piece of the rotation. They're all the same. All the controls are exactly the same. And all I'm doing is tweaking a little bit the interp speeds between these and the values so my max pitch speed is one okay because I didn't really if I did that too fast it was just I was able to kinda just nosedive way too fast max roll speed 
uh, is one as well because these were mouse controls these two are mouse control so I putting this here so that I can tune it back the fact that it's one right now means I could bypass it entirely but there may be instances say I've taken some damage or something like that that I want to lower it so that you know you can't turn as easy anymore because my you know my tail rotor is not destroyed but it's damaged so I can't turn as fast anymore you know until I go hit a repair point that kind of thing you see a bunch of smoke start coming off of the of that point of the of the vehicle you know so you could have damage affects certain characteristics and things like that and that's it for the controls I mean that that is it I, I don't really know what else to show um, just in case you need to see the variables main upward thrust starts at zero max thrust is 300 Hover power is 15, engine power starts at 0, yaw speed is 0, forward thrust is 20, max yaw speed is 5, gravity is 980, pitch speed is 0, max pitch speed is 0, or max pitch speed is 1, sorry, roll speed is 0, max roll speed should be 1, rotor speed starts at 0, but the max rotor speed is 35. Okay, so those are the variables that are here. Um, and that's that's really it. That's really it. Uh, again, the power up function. That's this is my trick, my main trick for that. Uh, which is kind of a cheesy trick. Just give it a give it a uh, some kind of output, just so something, so that it can at least be called. Because if you, I, I tried to say, hey, I'm just going to make a function here and call it, and I had nothing here, no outputs, and it gave me like an error. This function doesn't have any, you know, like a return node. And it does a function doesn't give you a return node, right? So test function, you know, it, it, maybe I can call it now. It was giving me weird issues. Test function here. Hmm. I guess it would work. I guess you don't really need to do that. Uh, but I did it anyway. I don't even know what happened to it. Oh, well, it's here. But yeah, that's that's one way to create, like I said, one way to get a function call from your parent to your child and make sure that the child defines the function is define a very either very simple or completely empty function in your parent and then just override it in the child but you can call it from the parent in any case that you want so that's what I did there uh, and that's it so I'll just demo it one last time hopefully you guys thought it was cool as shit because I know I did I'm pretty stoked about it uh, it's very very similar to Battlefield's controls and um, it's the first time since uh, UDK that's a headshot by the way uh, that's the only reason he dies in one shot, because I'm god mode. But um, this is, like I said, uh, similar to Battlefield's controls. Uh, obviously, theirs is probably a lot more robust than mine is right now. Um, but it's not that I can't fly around in the same basic fashion here. They, um, Because if you remember, the UT air vehicles, they're all hover vehicles. Uh, now, I know I have this thing set to hover, but what's different is that um, when you rolled like this in the UT vehicle, it didn't do that, right? It just turned. You didn't have the ability to roll. It wouldn't crash if you rolled too far or pitched too far. Uh, the mouse going you know, forwards or backwards here wasn't controlling the speed or anything like that. This is much more like your kind of traditional old school BFV, BF2, BF Bad Company you know, Battlefield series style helicopter control, which has been my favorite for just an absolute eternity. So I love flying helicopters in video games. It's just the funnest thing in the world. But I'll be honest with you guys, I thought that the Unreal hover vehicles like the Manta and the, or the Cicada or whatever, whichever one was that big flying ship, I just that was the most boring vehicle control scheme I've ever seen in my life. It's like a, an infant could do it. Uh, this you can crash you know what I'm saying you couldn't even you couldn't crash that thing so you know I do have like I said a lot more work to do on it uh, it's gonna need you know the, um, the the ability to crash actually I do have a wreck mesh and all that stuff I need the ability to shoot the weapons I need better camera 
Um, I also need particle effects, sounds, you know, there's tons to it, but uh, the fundamentals are here. They are, in fact, here. Let's see, now it's... i got to figure out why it starts... I think what... Ha it's kind of weird. It feels like when I... Um, it seems like when I hit something that... Uh, it feels kind of like broken. The up and down. Now, if you, if you get the thing sa like sailing down just way too fast, uh, it can actually be kind of hard to recover that and start going back up again. But that could be pretty easily resolved, I think. I don't even know where my platform is. I'm I'm looking all over the place. Am I way below it? Yeah, I'm way below it. So let me see if I can't reach back up there. Okay, just looking at the horizon, I should be able to should be able to go up. So I don't climb very fast. Um, I could definitely increase the amount of climb speed on it. Every time I look, I'm basically dropping myself back down to the ground. It's still way above me. Yeah, I'm just like totally dropping now, so. But in a, say, like a better map, uh, that I can't fall way down to the bottom of the universe here. Try my actual map here and see how it feels flying around in there. Should be pretty fun, I think. So we'll start right here. which might actually be inside of my player start. Where am I starting? I think I'm starting. Uh, start up there. Okay. Let's make sure that it drops a little bit. All right, it's got to power up. It's powered. Let's see, I can fly around the room. Uh oh. <laughs> I all screwed up. It might be a little large for the room. Again, you can see, you know, I would be dead right here, right? There's no way I'm going to be able to land right here, but that's when I can just add collisions for the uh, rotor blades and basically just screw you over, you know. Come try to fly through here. It would be a major skill shot if that's even possible. Like I said, it does feel a little bit large for the world, but that's okay because uh, I'm essentially going to uh, let you shoot doors and open them and then once you like shoot the door you'll uh, be able to go out into the rest of the house so right now I just have the one map here yeah it does it gets a little squirrely when I hit something I, I really need to figure out what's going on. I need to land and then I'm back to normal again I don't know what's going on there it feels like my mesh is getting rotated separately from the collision or something from the up vector because it just see it just kind of starts doing that but uh, I'll investigate that later uh, right now I need to take a break but um yeah there it is it's a helicopter and that's how I did it uh, and it's totally awesome uh, it's fun you, you know I think it's fun it's gonna be a lot funner when I get all the sounds and all the effects and everything in and I have the have the uh, ground effects, you know, when you get close to stuff, it starts kicking smoke. That's an easy trace downward, right? Start playing a particle effect. You play that ring of smoke that keeps puffing out at the bottom, you know? Builds up based on the uh, engine power or something, right? It'd be pretty sweet. Then you hover over stuff and you go real close, you know? Be like blowing dust everywhere. Be sweet.
So that's it. That's Hitboss signing off. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.